Now when I first started investigating the aluminium cylinder by dropping a magnet through it, I noticed that the magnet slowed down. This was due, I thought, to the eddy current setting up in the aluminium cylinder. So I thought that if I set this coil up, I would also be able to slow the magnet down. When I tested it though, there didn't seem to be any change. So I thought, well maybe I should try some other ideas. And the first idea was to try more wire to make a bigger coil. But I didn't notice any change in effect. So the next thing I tried was a much bigger coil. This time it had 600 turns. When I tried this coil, it did seem to have some change to the motion of the magnet. And I could feel a little bit of a force acting when the magnet passed through. Now what I really need to investigate is to work out how the EMF is induced in the coil. Now to do this, I need to measure the voltage being produced when the magnet passes through the coil. Now what I've done is I've connected that to an instrumentation amplifier which will measure the very small voltages which are coming from the coil. The instrumentation amplifier is connected to my data logger. And here's what I found out. When I moved the magnet through the coil fairly quickly, in both directions, it produced two very similar pulses. When I moved the magnet through the coil very slowly, it produced a pulse which was very flat in the middle. When I moved the magnet very quickly at one end, it produced a lot of change. When I moved it quickly in the middle, not very much change at all. At the other end, a lot of change again. OK, now this sort of data is exactly the sort of data I need to analyse what's going on inside this coil. It also allows me to try other experiments using more wire to make maybe a longer coil, a shorter coil, or even winding the coil backwards in a different way. It also allows me to investigate what's going on inside this coil by using the same instrumentation.